I would like you to recall that this is more than a theoretical debate, much more. This is a debate about real people. We are your brothers and your sisters, your sons and your daughters, your friends and your fellow Australians. And this is a debate about us, a debate about rights, a debate about intimate and personal relationships, a debate about the people we love. Most of us hope to find the person we want to share our life with, the person we love. Not all of us are lucky enough to do so, and not all of us are able to hold on to it. But if we do, and are prepared to make that commitment, to declare that enduring bond of which Justice Kennedy spoke, surely that ought to be celebrated and not feared. Do we really think, in 2015, that the state should say to people, prepare to make that promise to each other, no, you can't. I say it should not. Australians say it should not. In the USA, the circumstances were somewhat different. The equality advocates didn't like the people or the legislatures having their say. They wanted the unelected and politically compromised judiciary to force nationwide acceptance of same-sex marriage. This they did in a 5-4 vote that found some new constitutional right that hadn't existed since the American Constitution had been written. Which brings me back to where I began, the concept of competing rights and determining whose should prevail. If same-sex marriage becomes a reality in Australia, do religious institutions or people of faith have the right to not participate or not to provide services to a same-sex wedding? Will teachers and schools be compelled to endorse same-sex marriages in their classroom? Will even speaking in favour of traditional marriage be deemed offensive and the speaker subject to sanction? All around the world, the same-sex marriage advocates have maintained that will not be the case until they get marriage redefined. Then the process of eroding the rights of others begins. Charities, businesses and individuals that do not support homosexual marriage have been sacked, forced to close or change their practices because of their beliefs. Florists, photographers and bakers, they've been taken to court or forced to pay thousands of dollars in fines for exercising their right not to act contrary to their conscience. Churches have been compelled to officiate in same-sex marriage ceremonies and teachers have been stood down for publicly supporting traditional marriage. But of course, we're told that such coercive infringement on personal liberty and freedom of speech will not happen here. Unfortunately, it's too late. It's already begun. 